When it comes to education and the choices that high school students have to make, especially going forward to post-secondary or career choices, there's so many options out there. Uh, sciences, for example, has so many branches, be it applied or, or theoretical science, yet a recent study that was published shows that in a study of 16 to 18 year olds across the country, only about a third of them are actually considering any science going forward. This brings concern to certain people and it's causing uh, a bit of a public outreach and one of the people who's speaking on behalf of science is someone who used science as a backdrop to the beginning of their career. There's certainly uh, a lot of knowledge of who this is. He's made himself famous as one of the dragons on CBC Dragons then and it's Brett Wilson. Uh, how did you get involved in a general sense about speaking for science as a, as a curriculum uh, choice? Well, there's two things. One is I first became aware of Let's Talk Science probably 15 years ago when the woman behind the program um, actually won an award called 40 Under 40, uh, the top 40 under 40, yep. at the same time I did. So that put me on the radar, that put the cause on the radar screen. I actually put money into it, so it meant a lot to me then. And now 15 years later, we're looking at a program that Amgen Canada has put together with Let's Talk Science. Mm -hmm. And their goal is to raise the issue, is to celebrate the fact that science as a backdrop for any kind of education program or career is valuable. Let's talk a little bit about this study and, and the survey. And it was about, I think it was over 500 students that were, and it was a, a, a good representation across the country. Yep. And the numbers I found a bit staggering too. Of, of the 500 that were surveyed, only about a third uh, are even considering taking signs post-secondary as a career choice. I don't, know, I don't know about you, but I found that odd, especially considering, I guess the survey also said that about 8 out of 10 understand the career hmm. choices out there, and they also understand that if we you know, don't have enough science and professionals in there, we're, we're in trouble. I mean, how did, when you saw those numbers, how did you feel about those? Well, I always challenge numbers when I see them, and then again, that's my science background. Yeah. So the first thing I wonder is whether or not people are still pigeonholing the concept of science and thinking of science as what happens in a laboratory. Certainly it does happen there, but it happens in a computer room, it happens in the engineering faculty, mm. it happens in a broad range of experiences, and you alluded to that in your intro, that there are so many things that comprise science, and I think sometimes there's a perception issue, not reality, perception. So what we have to do is work on perception. And, and I think that's a key too, because uh, as, as you're right, there are so many choices, and I think, especially with young kids, I don't think they quite realize uh, just how much of their daily lives are either affected or are, are brought about by science. I mean, I don't know, think about the video games you play or the iPod in your mm -hmm. ear or, or the laptops you're into. This is all, I guess, uh, part of their everyday lives, but it's based in science. Well, a perfect example, my daughter finished with a, an engineering degree recently and she's now working as a sailor in the Caribbean. Seems like a disconnect. Some have challenged her and said, but you're not using your engineering degree. You're not using your science background. And she says, I am whenever I'm awake. It's taught me how to think, it's taught me how to analyze, it's taught me how to process. It's only while I'm awake. And she makes fun of it. And obviously this applies also to your background. Uh, it's funny, so many people know you for, for what you are, the dragon, the investor, the man who's you know, made his, his, his career out of mm -hmm. what you do and what you see publicly, but you have a science and engineering background from, oh, from nice. Saskatchewan. I mean, yep. how, did you, how did you make that leap? Because this is a great testament to what the future can be for people who take science uh, in school? Well, one of the things I was taught as a kid was, and it was really my mother pushing me, uh, was to make sure I studied all the sciences so that I had all the options. So I took every math, every science, whether it was chemistry or physics or biology, didn't matter. I had them all. Mm -hmm. So that that gave me all the options when I went to university. Then at university, I had two choices in my mind. One was engineering. The other was business. And I think it was my mom who said, you know what, you're pretty strong with the numbers, why don't you stay with engineering, because you can always go into business. Mm. And sure enough, three, four years later, I discovered a program called the MBA, which is just an advanced education program in terms of business. But for me, it became sort of the next goal. So I finished my engineering degree, took work in the oil and gas industry, mm -hmm. and realized that I loved engineering. Mm -hmm. And I got into it, I spent three, three and a half years, but over time, started to realize that I wanted to do more. And in this case, I didn't want to just be involved with the science right. of the oil and gas industry, which I was good at. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be involved with the management decisions, the financing, the marketing, the business of creating wealth in the oil and gas industry. So that's how I evolved. So I use science as my platform. And let me tell you that as a marketing advantage, as a competitive advantage, mm -hmm. my understanding of my engineering background ran circles around a few of our competitors as a result.
It's funny that you mentioned your mom earlier on. Uh, I know part of the, the Let's Talk Science group is, is obviously advocating making science fun and the way it's taught in schools. Yep. But we all know, as you're a parent, and I'm a parent as well of four, uh, a lot of what our children become starts at home. Yep. Uh, how, how, in your any thoughts or ideas, of how do we encourage or advocate or promote the, the, the interest in science in our children, not just as teenagers, but right from the very beginning? What are some of the thoughts you have on that? Well, there's several things. First of all, the primary objective I would have in terms of educating people is awareness, making people aware of all the options that are out there. Now, was certainly something my mom did is the, the whole concept of you can be anything mm -hmm. and then start guiding them and in the case of my ex-wife ex now but my wife and I were both engineers mm -hmm. it was fairly obvious at some point that my kids would pick up on the fact that we had a strong background in mathematics science all the, the numbers side of the game and so it was inevitable all three of my kids have ended up one's doing a PhD in science one working on his master's and the other's already graduated with an engineering degree right. so science is of interest to them right. clearly and they see it though as a great platform. It's learning how to learn and it really doesn't matter whether you've gone down a narrow path like learning to design games in a computer science yeah. world or a more generic in the science of psychology and right. you know, some of the softer sciences yep. as you'd call them. They're all still sciences. You know it's funny, a, a, a good personal story just happened last weekend. I mean I have four children, three boys and, and uh, we, uh, we have a membership to the Toronto Zoo here. It's yeah. one of the great zoos in the world. And uh, you know, we, we've been there dozens of times, but for whatever reason, on uh, this past weekend when we went, my three boys had it in their head that we're gonna bring a little notepad along. And we went to several pavilions, and they had it in their mind. Every time they learned something, they had to jot it down. Like and, 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 you know, yeah. and it was great, because you see all these people looking, what are they doing? <laughs> and then they got home, and they reviewed their information, they started drawing pictures. You know, how as parents could we not support that kind of thing? Because it just proves that it's learning, but boy, they're having fun too. Yep. And that's really the point you're making is that the world is the laboratory, yeah. not the laboratory is the world. Exactly. Now, with, with your role in Dragons then, I'm curious if, if you, because of your background, maybe have a penchant or perhaps maybe a softer spot for entrepreneurs that come up there that you know, pitch something that might be rooted in science or scientific. Have you ever found yourself leaning more towards that? Or? Well, I would, you know, I don't think the word soft spot is correct, but I have an increased ability to analyze and to analyze and synthesize. Mm -hmm. So when we see things come on that have got a technical bent, I'm drawn to them because I understand them. Right. Again, not a matter of being weak and soft, and it yeah. wasn't. It wasn't you were implying that I was. No, no. That I was wrong. Just going maybe down a, 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 a. But that certainly yeah, I have an, an affinity yeah. for that area, and whether it's uh, the 18-year-old who had invented a, a unicycle that had its own sensors, so it was a motorcycle. I you think know, I remember that. Yeah. An amazing device. Yeah. Now, you know what? I invested in that guy because I believed in him. He, the kid was a mad scientist. He's a genius at the age of 18. He's now at MIT, and guess what? We're not following. The business that I invested in is not making the Uno. It's making another, not the second prototype. We're already on the third prototype. Mm. I invested in a mad scientist. Love the kid. That's, and that's great. He's probably, because of his passion, it's going to fuel him through the troubled times as well. Oh, yeah, and a quick shout out to Ben Gulak. I'm sorry if I called you mad. No. <laughs> but you are nuts. And you know, Philanthropy is obviously important for you as well, and you're yes. known as the, the, the giving dragon as well. And well, it may be hard to make a direct correlation and comparison between science and, and giving in the greater good. I wonder if you have any thoughts about how, in fact, how science has been applied in so many ways in our daily lives that we don't take for granted, how our knowledge and those who study and become you know, professionals in science have perhaps contributed to our overall greater good. Is there, is there some linkage you might making that comparison. Well, science and so many branches of it are what advances the world. Mm -hmm. You know, the status quo, science has never accepted that it is. I mean, there was a flat earth society at one time. We got over that. Mm -hmm. You know, there was people who said the internet will never grow to anything meaningful. Right. We've got over that. You know, and again, it's science that's at the forefront of all the changes, whether it's in human psychology, human dynamics, or computers. It doesn't matter. Science is what's advancing the fronts. And that applies then in terms of how it's relevant mm -hmm. to every single charity because it's relevant in terms of bringing water to the world. It's the application of some sand filters that a friend of mine was involved with. Mm -hmm. She's impacted four million people in the world with a sand filter. Um, there's just so many different technologies. Afghanistan has the most advanced phone system in the world. Brought to Afghanistan, the technology and tools came out of Vancouver. Hmm. Kid's a genius. Hmm. Anyway, science yeah. is relevant in so many ways.
Now, there's a lot of challenges that I guess the world faces, and science is necessary to solve them. Uh, I sort of alluded off camera that I, I have the honor of going across the country and speaking to high school kids myself yep. about, uh, you know, my talk is climate change. But one of the messages that I really give to them is maybe they weren't the ones who created the problem, but by taking ownership versus, you know, feeling entitled to somebody else, by, by owning the problem, now they have a chance in being part of the solution, and part of that solution, I mean, if they're 16 years old, they don't know what they want to do for a living, well, how about being a scientist or engineer or psychologist and get to the root of the problem and become part of the solution? And I think maybe one of the challenges we have to do as a, as a, as a greater movement is to really make that resonance uh, obvious to them. Well, and that's, again, going back to the whole issue of perception. Sometimes the perception of what constitutes science is very narrow when the reality is, and you just shared it, the breadth of things that are brought to impact, for example, on global climate change. You have climatologists, mm -hmm. you have physicists, you yep. have biologists, yep. you have weather forecasting. I mean, the range that's impacted, and of course, computer technology, internet, weather gathering systems, weather, you know, flight simulation, everything that's involved in trying to bring that information together. And there's literally millions of scientists around the world in Involved with all aspects of climate change, and that's just one aspect yeah. of what we do. You know, if somebody wants to really uh, carry forward with some of the resources that you might be uh, talking about, if if it's a student uh, at school, or a teacher, or a parent, what are some of the resources that they could use to help? foster an interest in science? Well, Let's Talk Science has actually developed three websites okay. that all are sort of slotted for different age groups. At the early ages, we've got wingsofdiscovery.ca, which is really targeted at early childhood development, and it's very interactive, it's very friendly, very easy to use. There's uh, Wings of Discovery starts it, mm -hmm. and then we've got Curiosity. Mm -hmm and it's curiosity.ca and that's a really cool website because that gets into questions like why are there dimples on a golf ball? I mean it starts getting into the question and answer. Why am I, why will my yep. golf ball not fly straight? <laughs> really it does. Well, that's a why. separate problem. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That would be your elbow. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, so we have a lot of fun with and curiosity is really aimed at I would call it teenagers but every kid from 5 to 12 wants to be a teenager so it's really aimed at youth and then the broad website the bigger picture website which is really aimed at educators and, and, and children if you you will of all ages is um, let's talk science mm -hmm. .ca. so very logical and that's the place where I spend most of my time when I'm playing around well you know you never had those resources back in your day when you were a child learning about science but what, what stoked your interest well when I was born I wanted to know how big is the world and I still remember that first question that every kid asks which is why is the sky blue and it still annoys me because I don't know the answer. I can't, <laughs> at least I can't remember the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, that's what peaks. I mean, that's the, the early childhood curiosity is what we need to capture yeah. and build on because every kid wants to know more. That's, uh, what a better way that, to finish off than that because that really is about uh, questioning and, and, and giving facilities and, and opportunities to learn more. And I thank you so much for the advocacy work that you've done and, and for taking the time to, to speak with us today. It's really been great. Well, as a parent, I appreciate the opportunity. My pleasure, and it's you know, and and if as what Brett did say, you know, there, there's so much opportunity with science, and I think, you know, as as a father myself, and as as all parents around can really attest, we want the best for our children, and if science is one of those potential careers, we should encourage them to explore it because of the opportunity that lies ahead. Let's do that. Let's all get together and think about the benefits of science, not just those generic uh, arts degrees which we don't know what to do with. Let's get a little applied, is it not, right? Well, that's it for this time. For the Yummy Mummy Club, who's your daddy? Well, that's me. I'm Eric Novak. I'll see you next time.